In my opinion, the Honeycomb Alpha Yoke and Switch panel from Honeycomb Aeronautical is without a shadow of a doubt the very best budget yoke available today. At £230 or thereabouts, this device will ensure that your simulation rig is a suitable starting platform for any aircraft, be it general aviation, commercial or military. And with their forthcoming modular six lever throttle quadrant and rudder pedals also on the way, Honeycomb Aeronautical certainly have filled the void that was left by SciTech. However, the high build quality, unique design and sensational desk mount doesn't quite describe the Honeycomb Alpha yoke precisely. At first look, this does appear to be the perfect yoke solution, but there are some areas which do not fill the initial promise. Hi, I'm Sim UK, a full-time software and hardware critic on YouTube. It's my goal to identify the best and worst qualities for everything I review, so that you can buy with confidence and know exactly what you will get for your money. Sim UK is always free to watch, but I do ask you to at least consider donating us £1 a year to enable us to make more reviews for you in the future. Thank you so much and enjoy the review. I bought this honeycomb yoke just before Microsoft Flight Simulator released, and I bought it from Amazon for just over £230. It arrived promptly, and the packaging was of the highest quality. There's very little chance of this getting damaged in transit. Upon closer inspection, the premium packaging is not a disguise, but a complement for the yoke and its peripherals, which are of the highest quality. I'll start this review by focusing on the very best bits of the yoke. The desk mount is a thing of beauty. It's strong, robust and extremely effective, far better than any of the SciTech yoke mounts that I have used in the past. This hex printed mounted base is super strong and very rigid, while still being very lightweight. On the bottom it has an M3 designed sticky pad, which if you have ever used M3 before, you will know that this thing will stick like glue, but without damaging your surfaces. The sticky suction is so strong that additional release clips exist at the rear of the base in order to help you lever it from your desk. And the heavy duty strong iron based clamps are impressively ample and there is zero risk of them ever breaking or weakening over time. The Alpha Yoke connects to your PC via a USB-C to USB cable and it's of a decent length. Once mounted, plugged in and connected, you will immediately notice not only the soft rubberized finish, but the sleek and stylish design. This is a thing of beauty, further enhanced by the dimmable honeycomb hexagonal red lighting. The built-in switch delivers four rocker switches, five flip switches and a rotatable ignition key. Perfect for Cessnas, Pipers and any other small to medium general aircraft that you could care to mention. But they can all be rebound to perform whatever function you want them to unlike my Cytec switch panel, which was pretty much locked down. The yoke is somewhat oversized, more akin to a 747 than a Cessna, but it retains an ergonomically friendly grip position and thumb rests. It connects to the base via an RJ45 coiled cable, and this connection, other than making the yoke look even more authentic, also allows for the solid steel yoke shaft to exist. This solid steel and its dual linear ball bearing design improves upon previous SciTech yokes that I own by ensuring that the absolutely essential 180 degree rotation is super smooth with absolutely zero mechanical dead zone. I'll talk a bit more about that in a bit. The pitch rotation has a decent amount of resistance which really does benefit you when you're trying to trim the aircraft. Without doubt, this is my favorite aspect of this particular yoke. The left handle has a push to talk back button, an eight way hat switch, an additional push button and twin double rocker trim switches to replicate a failsafe system which is implemented in most modern aircraft I believe in order to ensure that trim runaway does not occur. A really fantastic attention to detail addition. It was the inclusion of this which meant that X-Plane 11 actually introduced code in order to support the functionality of a failed trim switch. The right handle has two horizontal rocker switches for rudder trim, again supporting the failsafe system mentioned before. In addition to all of that, there is one large red and one small white button on the right handle. 
Both X-Plane 11 and Microsoft Flight Simulator immediately recognize, and both sims also provide pre-configured loadouts for the buttons. So far, no additional software or drivers have been required, ensuring seamless connectivity for the alpha yoke and the switch panel. In addition, there are SciTech compatible screw points, allowing existing SciTech owned panels to be attached to the device, and for the device itself to attach to any pre-existing yoke mounts, like this wheel stand pro mount. Despite all of the excellent features mentioned, I do have some reservations about the Alpha Yoke. Some issues are immediate, like the extremely loose roll axis, whilst other issues are more cautionary, areas with potential to cause issue in the future. It is only fair to mention that Honeycomb Aeronautical have been quoted as providing a five-year warranty with each device, but actually what they are really offering is a two-year limited warranty and a five-year tension band replacement warranty. So they must at least be fairly convinced of its robust suitability, but a five-year warranty on all parts would have convinced me a heck of a lot more. The first issue has to be the yoke's dead zone. Now mechanically, there is no dead zone at all, nothing at all. This is super smooth in all directions, but unfortunately, when calibrated, a small digital dead zone can emanate. There is a recalibration procedure requiring you to put the buttons in the following pattern, pressing the backlight until you see the following flashing combination at the front, and then a calibration system that you have to adhere to. Strangely enough, Honeycomb chose not to share this recalibration option with their customers as part of the sale. This caused a number of unsatisfied reviews as a result. It would appear that during calibration at the factory, Q&A was lacking and some devices were sent out with very poor calibration indeed. And it seems that on the most part, at least, a simple recalibration does appear to have reduced or even completely eradicated any such dead zone issues. On this device that I have right here, there is a small but noticeable dead zone issue. And after calibration, it was much the same, but not really a problem. The roll axis is very, very weak, considerably weaker than the pitch axis is, and this possesses a few small problems. The first problem is subjective, but for me, it just doesn't feel anywhere near as good as the pitch axis does. I wouldn't expect or necessarily want it to be the same level of resistance as the pitch provides, but the current level of resistance is just too weak in order to feel really authentic. The second issue is that these tension bands will ultimately weaken over time, and whilst the pitch axis tension band is so strong and robust, it will likely continue to feel good for a very, very long time. The roll axis, on the other hand, is so weak already that it might actually stop doing its primary job, which is to centralise the yoke. With a five-year warranty in place, this might never become a serious problem, and simply requesting a warranty replacement within five years could easily ensure that you get 10 years or even more with prolonged use on this device. Now, the buttons on this device are an area for mild concern. The build quality of the internal components seem really high, and the yoke is weighty enough to endorse that. But the buttons and the switches on the device, they do not feel as though they are of the highest quality. During my testing, they have been accurate and responsive throughout, but they do feel like they could potentially become a weak spot, maybe in about two years' time. The ignition switch is more robust, and fundamentally, I have far less concern over this particular aspect. Rather, it is the lack of a spring-loaded ignition switch, not an issue so much as a missed opportunity. I am, however, a little disappointed with the yoke's button positioning. These oversized and clunky trim switches offer great functionality, but they are in the way, and they make pressing the other buttons far less ergonomic. By placing the top white push buttons on the inside, they make access to them uncomfortable at best. I am actually seriously considering switching the tops of the yoke over so that the white buttons are on the outside and far easier to get to. If this was a free review device, then I would certainly do that. I might also open up the base and see if I could add more resistance to the roll and spring load functionality to the ignition switch. But as I've paid for this myself, that would void my warranty, and that is a concern. Now, the surface covering is nice to look at. It's smooth to the touch, and it certainly looks stylish. But this is the same type of covering that could potentially degrade over time. 
Now that might not matter so much on the base, but the yoke itself also has this same covering where your hand grips are. Now, if you're a serious sim pilot, then you know you should only be flying with a very loose grip, maybe one finger and one thumb. But maybe this is an issue that will only affect a small proportion of the community, but certainly time will tell on this particular issue. One of my more serious concerns is with the attached RJ45 cable. When the yoke is rotated, there is some small yet noticeable flex and movement within the connectors. Now over time, this could cause wear and possibly cause a short. Now if the cable itself gets damaged, I don't see this as being an issue because a cable replacement is cheap and super easy. But if the connection point within the base or within the yoke itself becomes damaged, well, then you're looking at a complete replacement. So my final thoughts are this. Without doubt, this is the best budget yoke available on the market right now. But that alone is not necessarily an endorsement. The Logitech Pro Flight Yoke is a terrible device, which should never have been continued when Logitech bought ownership of SideTech from Mad Cats. Instead, what they should have done is keep this Cessna Pro Flight range going, a vastly better system which provides 180 degree rotation and a considerably better designed yoke and button design overall. In addition, the Cessna Pro Flight Yoke has three mode switches that allows the number of active buttons to treble from a relatively impressive 22 buttons on the yoke to a whopping 66. That considerably outweighs the 20 available buttons on the Honeycomb Alpha, and that's including the switch buttons as well. But even with that in mind, the Honeycomb just about nudges the Cytec Cessna Pro Flight off of the top spot, not because of its additional included switch panel, because for the same price you can actually buy the Cytec or now Logitech switch panel and gain more functionality as it will also include a landing gear lever, something which will of course be present on the Bravo Throttle Quadrant later this year. So no, indeed, it is actually the smooth action on both the pitch and the roll axes, and more importantly for me at least, the level of resistance that it delivers on the pitch. This really helps when trimming and adds an awful lot to the overall immersion. The Honeycomb Alpha yoke and switch panel is the best device for those flight sim fans on a budget and despite the limitations, the concerns and the potential issues that I've mentioned, I really can highly recommend this device to anyone looking to get serious about their flight simulation. I already have a Cytec Cessna Pro Flight rig and whilst the improvements on the Honeycomb yoke are clear for all to see, they are not that significant that it completely renders my old Cytec Cessna Pro Flight yoke as redundant. In fact, if anything, it makes me appreciate it that little bit more. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Until next time, goodbye.